Okay, now I'm gonna take a break there for a second. We gotta take out the edge finder. And now we'll go, we'll take out the collet. These are R8 collets, which has to do with the, the style and taper on the collet. As you can see, it has a taper here. It pulls up into a taper. I don't know if I can show it on here. I'll try it. Pulls up into a taper inside the spindle that's obviously centered on the spindle. The rotation, rotating axis, rotational axis of the spindle. This is a half inch collet. I want to go down to a quarter inch, or actually three eighths. Sorry. This is a three eighths collet, basically another R8. I'm going to slide it up in here, get that slot lined up. There it is. Bring it up. And then the way it's held is with this large bolt up here on top. This is called a draw bolt. And I bring this in. As I bring it up, it pulls that collet up in there. I think you can see it moving. And what I want to do is pull it up there a good ways to where it just touches. Okay, now it's going up in a taper, and that's what's going to center it. That's how the uh, conical pieces on the uh, BQ receivers work. It's a tapered fit, taper to taper, and it centers tapers on tapers. So we bring this up in here about yay deep. This is a three fleet um, straight end mill. This one has a coating on it, tang coating, um, or TN or however they say it. Really doesn't have to, it just happens to be that I got a deal on this one on eBay. And it does the cuts that I need it to do. Uh, three flute, why? Because it clears chips better than a four flute does. Um, basically, I want to make sure that it's high enough that it's not going to touch, which I can tell it is, obviously. I'm going to bring this into zero on the end mill. Okay, on the X, on the Y axis. Sometimes it bounces around a little bit. Now the center of this end mill is over the back um, rail of the uh, unit. Now I do have this cheat sheet that I've made up after doing a number of these. And, of course, this is what I'm following down here for Ruger receivers. Kid receivers are a little bit different. And basically, what I'm looking to do is I have centers marked on here so that you can, so I can figure out where I'm at. Basically, I want that quarter inch end mill to be centered here at .4075, give or take a thou. And what that does is puts the edge of it down here where it needs to be, which is 0.2825 up in the bottom. So that's basically a quarter inch from there to there, or eighth of an inch, I'm sorry. So here we go. We're going to move this on the x-axis to 0.4075. Two, three, four, 075. That's where my center needs to be. And that's here, which would give me a bottom wall here. And that should line everything up so that the tang is even with this top edge. It's going to be pretty doggone close to it anyway. Now keep in mind this is curved. The tang isn't. The tang has a straight lip on it. So I kind of average this out a little bit and get it as close as I can. A little bit of a curve will be sticking up. But not so that it's going to hurt anybody. Now the next thing to do is I need to bring this down. Kind of unlock the spindle, which is done by turning this handle in and out. I want to bring this down till it touches. And that gives me that dimension, that right there. 
and then I'll reach over and zero that and I'll check it so that's zero that means I'm touching it what that gives me is a starting point for my cut and I'll bring this up above and make sure that we're on here got to take and tighten this done dustily with a spanner wrench and, and uh, put that wrench in the top at the draw bar and then rotate the draw bar and hold the spindle still all right so that's locked in I'm gonna put this cover back on by having the cover on there I know that I tightened it I don't put that cover on unless it's tight so we do that now <coughs> We'll start her up. This I want to crank up. This is the RPM of the spindle. I want to get that up around 1200. A lot of people are running faster. I just, I don't want to abuse my mill. 1200 seems to work just fine. Anywhere around in there is going to be just fine. Okay? And what I'm looking for is to go from point 475, which is here, to the second center, which is 782.5, okay? So, what we'll do is we'll bring this down. I can, once this is locked here, then I can use this micro adjustment wheel to bring this down. I'm gonna bring it down to where it just touches. Okay, so I'm going to zero again because that's more accurate. This is a clearance cut. All we're looking for are the sides, the radius, and the sides. The depth of it just needs to make sure it clears whatever the width, whatever the depth of the, of the tang is. So, I've got it there. Now I'm going to cut, I'm gonna, I want to finish at about 60,000 beats. So I'm going to go in 30 which I can track right here. Actually, I'll go 25. I'll start off with 20, about 25 thou. I can take my feed and bring it on. You see how it feeds it all by itself? I'm going to cut that until I get over the 7. What was it? 782.5. So, we let it cut. We're going to feed it pretty slow. And we're going to stop that at 782.5. And that's counting it as it moves. So, right now we're at almost 700. We're at 700. I want to get 782.5 or thereabouts, pretty down going close to it. I'm going to stop it there on the feed. And what I'll do is I'll feed it the rest of the way by hand. There's 782.5. Now, I'm going to drop it down another 25, which makes it 50. You see it count down right there. I hope it can anyway. Now I could lock it, but there's no need to. Take and switch the direction on the peak power feed. And get it moving. Now it's going to come back the other way. Back to the 407 pipe. And you can see it's counting it down. This is where the DRO comes in real handy. Because it keeps things very accurate. So we're 4075 is what we're looking for. And closer 50, 40, 30, 20. So we're going to get down to 4075. Do the rest of it by hand. Okay. And then I'm going to go down. I'm at 50 now, I'm going to go down another 10. So 
And this time I'll lock it in. Again, not a critical dimension. It's clearance, but I'll just stay close. And we go back out to the 782.5. I'll let that run. Gives a pretty good finish. And we're going to get to 782.5, 10, 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 7825. Oops, went 5, 10 thousandths of an inch beyond it. Oh my goodness. Anyway, now I'm going to run it back over by hand. Make sure everything's cleaned up. 4075. I'll probably take an extra foul just to be sure that I got a, just a touch of clearance on that tank. Not much, but just a touch. So 4075, and I'm going to take the 4065. And that's it. And bring it up. And there's your your rear tang groove. So we'll take and bring this out. Just to check. I have a rear tang here. Should have got it out, but I didn't. Let me go get 